What's up guys, it's CodingBoy56 back at it with another video. Today we're going to learn how to make your robot turn without the use of a gyro. Let's get right into it. Hey guys, so instead of going to the program uh, directly, today we're going to do some of the math first because the programming part is pretty easy but we need to figure out how the math for this is going to work uh, and another thing this robot is one you guys usually see in the video but this time uh, I've lost the tracks for this that's what you don't see here um, so we'll be using a different robot for the actual thing this is just for demonstrative purposes anyway let's move on to the calculations so, um, to calculate any kind of turn we need, we need to be able to see the, well, let's, let's just visualize this robot as a huge circle. So, that's our circle right there, and the diameter is the distance between the two wheels. So, from there, you probably can't see that because of the light, I'm just going to shadow it, right from there to there. Now, normally, when you have a wheel... Uh, that becomes the center so we ha we'll just assume that this is the wheel here but it's actually here because of the tracks but for any kind of robot um, that does not have tracks which is the majority of them it's usually going to be right here with where the actual wheel is um, so it's going to pivot around the center here for a tank turn at least so a tank turn is just um, it's where you're moving one motor forward and the other or backwards whichever and then the other mo motor is moving in the opposite direction so by doing that it it uh it basically it's a much more compact turn i usually use tank turns but some people use pivot turns where you pivot around this point and then you just you pivot around one of the other wheels basically but with a tank turn you're piv pivoting around the center so that's why it's called a tank turn because you're well that's how tanks operate uh, so you're gonna have to move twice the distance with one of the wheels for a pivot so basically you're doubling this diameter because now the pivot is around here so now the circle is twice as large basically whereas with a tank it's this distance and the pivot is here so we can just make a true or false uh, okay that's a horrible drawing true or false uh, parameter and the actual my block saying whether it's going to be pivot or tank anyway for the actual calculation we're going to have to calculate the distance between the, the center of both of the wheels. So I've already done that uh, measurement and it is 18 uh, centimeters. Uh, my handwriting is so bad. So if we multiply this by pi, then we should achieve, uh, we should have gotten the actual uh, circumference of this little circle for the robot. Now, uh, the other calculation we need to make because we need to figure out how many rotations basically it takes for the robot to go around this entire circle Well, we'll start off with a tank for now just to simplify things uh, We need to find out um, How many times if you turn the wheel it gets you around this entire thing and we can do that by uh, finding the diameter of one of the wheels so basically this distance and uh, that distance is 3 centimeters and if we multiply that by pi we should get the um, circumference of the wheel so if we divide this distance by this distance uh, we should achieve uh, we should have gotten how many times by moving the wheel you're getting uh, one 360 degree turn of course one this way and then one the other way so now that we have this information, we need to convert it from rotations to degrees. And it's actually easier to do the calculation with de degrees. Um, and I'll explain why that is in just a second. So this tells us how many rotations you need to do to get around, but you need to figure out in degrees because that's what most people use, uh, at least on the, on the FLL table, because it's much more accurate. You have much more resolution, right? 360 times the resolution that you would have of a rotation. So uh, now we need to 
every time you multiply this, it's another 360 degree turn. But because we can actually write to the motor from a value from zero, sorry, not zero, what am I saying? You can actually write the actual degrees you want the, ro the motor to travel. You're already getting that. I hope that makes sense. I'm not the best at explaining these things. Basically, now that if we're dividing this uh, by 360, you're now if we multiply this by one with rotations, normally you're going one full. Um, you're you're already going through this one full time. But if you're going with degrees instead of rotations, then you're only going one degree because now it's divided by 360. Uh, along, so you're traveling one 360th along this circle here, and. This is actually where the magic happens because now we can input an angle and in our my block we just take this angle as an argument or parameter rather and we just plug that in there. So we want to let's say go 2 degrees along this, you just put it in 2. You want to go 568, that works too. It even works with a negative number and in which that case it will actually rotate counterclockwise. So it's pretty handy um, and we can even I'll simplify this even more by simply taking away this pi because we have pi on both sides now so we can just take that away and what we're left with is this distance divided by this distance so the diameter sorry the distance between the two wheels divided by the uh, circumference sorry the diameter of the wheel times your angle and it'll tell you uh, how many times you have to how many degrees you have to move each of the wheels in order to get to that degree turn and you just plug that into a motor block and you're good so pretty cool so in this case it's 18 centimeters divided by 3 which is 6 and then let's say we had an angle of 3 uh, so it's 18 divided by uh, 3 is 6 6 times 3 again is 18 so by moving each of the motors 18 degrees um, we can achieve an angle of three three degrees along this axis here. And now onto the programming. So here's the program. And it, here are the parameters that we have. There's speed. I usually keep this between 20 to 30. I mean, the lower your speed is, the more accurate it will be. Unless you want some kind of effect where you're starting at really fast and you're kind of slowing down, like where we had it with the gyro turn, if you've seen that video. And here is a tank slash pivot parameter. Uh, it is logic based, as you can see through the green data wire. Then we have the angle, so you can input like we talked about. And then you have the distance between wheels, which I misspelled. And then the diameter of the wheel. So they're all saved as variables. And then now we approach the bulk of the program, which is this giant if statement. It just says um, it just has two different cases: whether you your tank or pivoting. So if you, it's assuming that in the true case it's a tank, and in a false case it's a pivot turn. So we look at the tank case first, they're pretty much identical except for one difference. So what we have here is the formula we were talking about earlier, where we're dividing the distance uh, between the wheels by the diameter of the wheels, and then we are multiplying that by deg the degrees or the angle. It's saved in a variable called degrees. I just, I didn't want to create another variable since I already had this um, from previous programs. And then we have this switch over here that just uh, says if you're greater than zero, then you want to, um, you want to switch the motors basically. Because you have neg the reason you have this negative one here is because you want one to go forward and one to go um, backwards, but at the same speed. So in this case, it's just switching the motors, depending on whether you're going forward or backwards. That way, um, you can input a negative amount of degrees and get a counterclockwise turn. So that's pretty much it. And then we can look at the pivot, and all it does in this case is that it's multiplying the um, distance between the wheels by 2 and that's basically making the diameter of the circle like we talked about uh, and it's doubling it and so now it's it's making the wheels go twice the distance 
And what we can see over here is that um, there's nothing happening with one of the motors in both a true and false case for if it's the, the, the angle input is above zero or below zero. And that's pretty much it. This motor block takes in the speed that we have from... It looks like it's coming from the equation, but the power is actually coming from normal speed. And then, which we saved in uh, the variable from our parameter, and the uh, total degrees is coming from this equation. And that's pretty much it. So let's see the robot doing an action now. Hey guys, so um, I have the robot here, and we're just gonna try a 90 degree turn. I set the speed to about 20 on the my block. I don't want it to go too fast, at least not for such a small turn, so that we have a little bit of accuracy. Now to measure the angle and prove to you guys that it's actually doing about 90 degree turns, I'm going to reset the gyro to zero, download and run the program, and we'll see what it is afterwards. I don't know about you guys, but that looked pretty close to 90. Wow, exactly 90. That's pretty accurate considering we didn't use a gyro. So all I'm trying to say is that, um... Even by using four light sensors and no gyros, you should still be able to achieve um, good turning and um, straight programs. Um, this is the ideal setup because, I, as at least I've seen next year's mat, you're going to be using a lot of lines. So this is ideal. You don't need a gyro to make your turns, and you have more uh, light sensors to detect lines. I hope you guys enjoyed watching that video. If you liked it, remember to hit the like button, and if you feel like I earned your subscription, subscribe! See you in the next video. Bye!